So we now have our new number, i, which is going to allow us to solve any quadratic equation we like now. We're never ever going to come up with an answer which says, can't do it, because we can now. So if I have x squared plus 3x plus 7 equals 0, and I'd, uh, I'd go, oh, I can't factorise, I'm, I'm going to go to the quadratic formula. But I end up with square root of negative 19, and that's where in the past we would have said, oh, well, it's, it's got no answers. It's got no answers. But now it does. Because the square root of negative 19, I can simplify that third. Remember the idea behind simplifying thirds? You're trying to get the number in the third as a multiple of a perfect square. Well, negative 1 is a perfect square now, because i squared is negative 1. So whenever we see a negative sign, that becomes i. Square root of negative 1. So we now have root 19i. Some people, when we're dealing with thirds like this, put the i at the front so there's no confusion. It doesn't look like I'm saying the square root of 19i. And it's up to you again how you want to do that, but make it clear that it's not under the square root sign. When I'm handwriting square root signs, I always close my square root sign with a vertical line. So that way it's clear, bang, that's the end of the square root. What's coming next is not in the, the square root. Okay, so my two possibilities, negative 3 plus the square root of 19i on 2, and minus 3 minus root 19i on 2. And you might go, well, hang on, how on earth would you find that on the number plane? I mean, before we knew they were the x-intercepts, what on earth does this now mean? Well, there's no, they're not the x-intercepts because that number plane is the real number plane. So there are only real numbers on it. There are no imaginary numbers on it. But I suppose if you like to think of a third dimension, then they're there somewhere. So these numbers are like floating somewhere above or below that number plane. They're there, which you just can't see them. Every quadratic can be done by completing the square now. We can always turn it into the difference of two squares. So when I complete the square on this one, I get x plus 3 on 2 squared plus 19 on 4. And in the past, we'd say, oh, we've got a problem here. But I can now rewrite that 19 on 4 as minus 19 on 4 i squared, and I have the difference of two squares. So therefore, if I was to factorise that completely, I get x plus 3 on 2 plus root 19 on 2 i, x plus 3 on 2 minus root 19 on 2 i. So my solutions are the same as I, I got before. So it just gives us an alternative way, I guess, of solving quadratics. We, we can do it without having to go to the quadratic formula. Not that the quadratic formula is hard, but you know, it's another way of doing it. Creating quadratics then. This is a really important fact. If you have a quadratic and all the coefficients are real numbers, because now, of course, we could have a quadratic equation where one of the coefficients is not real. You might have x squared plus ix plus 1. Still a quadratic equation. But if we've got ones that we're used to seeing where all the coefficients are real, then the solutions must appear in conjugate pairs because you're going to get plus or minus the square root of something i. So you'll always get conjugates. Well, if that's true, which it is, I wouldn't lie to you, then my solutions are z and z conjugate. So it could be factorised to be x minus z, x minus z conjugate. If I expand that out, we can now see that, oh yeah, those coefficients turn out to be real. Look at the coefficient of x. We'd end up with minus, but z plus z conjugate. Well, if you add a number with its conjugate, the imaginary part's going to disappear. Because one's going to be plus something i, the other one's going to be minus something i. So I've got a real number. z times z conjugate, well, remember we said that was x squared plus y squared we end up again with a real number. So we have minus twice the real part of z plus the z, z conjugate. So now if I get a question like this, I could go the long way. And the long way would be to write this as, oh, well, it's x minus 4 plus i and x minus 4 minus i. Expand the whole thing out and you'd get the answer. But now I don't need to because I can say, well, hang on, I know the sum of the roots, going back to the quadratics, the sum of the roots is 8, which happens to be twice the real. So the coefficient of x will be minus twice the real. So 4 plus 4 in this case is 8. The product of the roots will be the sum of the two squares. 
So it's going to be 4 squared plus 1 squared, 17. So my equation must be x squared minus 8x plus 17 equals 0. That's a lot quicker than expanding the whole thing out. So just thinking, OK, well, I know what the roots are. So what's the sum of the roots? What's the product of the roots? Let's create our equation. How do you find the square root, then, of a complex number? There's several different techniques. Here's one way. If I know the answer is a plus ib, then I could square both sides, and a plus ib squared would be x plus iy. Expand out the left-hand side, and then I can equate real and imaginary. So if the square root of x plus iy, and we're saying the answer is a plus ib, I know that a squared minus b squared will always equal the real part, and 2ab will always equal the imaginary part. So I don't actually have to go and expand out each time. I mean, that pattern's going to happen every time. So I can just, bang, jump to it. So if I want to find the square root of negative 12 plus 16i, I'd say, well, okay, I know that the difference of two squares will be negative 12, the real part. And 2ab will be the imaginary part. Two equations, two pronumerals, should be able to find them. So b is equal to 8 on a. Sub that into the other one. Uh, let's get rid of the fraction. Multiply everything by a squared. I get a quartic, but it's a quartic which can be treated like a quadratic because those powers are going down by an even amount. And we should be able to solve it. a squared minus 4 times a squared plus 16. And I get two possibilities. a squared equals 4 or a squared is negative 16. A squared equals 4, we can do. It's plus or minus 2. And when I sub back in, that actually gives me B is plus or minus 4. Because if I look over here at this equation, whatever sign A is, B must be the same sign. Because B is equal to 8 divided by A. Now the second one was well, no solutions. Well, no real solutions. I don't bother looking for the imaginary solutions of that because if you look at how I set the original equation up, A and B are representing real numbers. B was the imaginary part, but the imaginary part is a real number. It's the multiple of the imaginary number. So I only need real solutions to this. Uh, well, A was real by itself. So my answer is, and this is where we get some controversy. Because you'll notice I've said plus or minus. And if I had said to you, what's the square root of 16? You would have said 4. You wouldn't have said plus or minus 4. But now I have to say plus or minus. Why? Yeah. We cannot order them. So I don't actually know... Which one is the positive solution? I mean, it sounds insane. Surely 2 plus 4i is the positive solution. But I don't know. I don't know what i is. So I've got to put both possibilities down. You will see some texts say, oh, well, we'll take the positive square root to be when the real part is positive. And I say, well, why? Well, what's, what's so important about the real part as opposed to the imaginary part? Why can't it be when the imaginary part is positive? So I just always think it's safer to say plus or minus the answer, 2 plus 4i. I said there were several ways of doing this. There it is, same question. This is how we're going to do it this time. Remember, we said the difference of two squares, a squared minus b squared is equal to x. And we said 2ab is equal to y. I'm going to do it a different way. Look at what happens. The sum of two squares x squared plus y squared is equal to, if I expand the whole thing out, I get a to the power of 4, 2a squared b squared plus b to the power of 4, which is a perfect square. So it turns out that the real part is the difference of two squares. The sum of two squares, that zz conjugate idea, real part squared plus the imaginary part, squared, equals the square root of x squared plus y squared. And that is a much easier simultaneous equation to solve. How do you know whether B is going to be positive or negative? You can tell by this. Remember, it turned out that if Y is positive, then either A and B have the same sign. They're both positive or they're both negative. But if Y was negative, then they must have different signs. So you just look at the imaginary part.
And if the imaginary part is positive, you know they have the same sign. And if the imaginary part is negative, you know they have a different sign. So let's do the same question. Square root of minus 12 plus 16i, I I could say, okay, I know a squared minus b squared must be the real part. a squared plus b squared must be the square root of the sum of two squares. 12 squared, 144. 16 squared, 156. Is that right? Add them together. Or is it 256? 256. Oh, that's better. Because when you add them together, you get 400. And that works out nice. Excellent. So we get 20. Um, Add those together. 2a squared is 8. So a is 2. And therefore b is 4. Bang, there's the answer. A lot quicker. A lot quicker. In fact, you'll even see some people call this, oh, by inspection. Because they go, I'll just do that all in my head. (laughs) 2 and (laughs) 4. Okay. So there we go. But be careful. The reason this works so nicely is these numbers 12 and 16 I picked for a very special reason. Why did I pick 12 and 16? Anyone there? Yeah. All to do with Pythagorean triads. See, if it forms a triad, I know the hypotenuse is going to be an integer. And 12, 16 is a multiple of the classic 3, 4, 5 Pythagorean triads. That's why if I had something like this... Not quite as easy, because <laughs> of course there is not a Pythagorean triad that goes four, five, and a lovely nice number. Difference of two squares is five. The sum of two squares is uh, square root of forty-one. So that's what I mean. It didn't turn out to be a nice, neat number, but I can still use the same idea. All right. Well, two a squared will be 5 plus the square root of 41. So a squared is a half of 5 plus the square root of 41. Oh, there's a. It's root 5 plus root 41. So that being the root of all of 5 plus root 41. Uh, Divided by root 2, rationalise the denominator. I get a half of the square root of all of 10 plus 2 root 41. And then I can substitute that back in to work out b. And there's my answer. (laughs) I mean, it's obvious it was going to be that, really, when you think about it. Um, so plus or minus a half, the square root of 10 plus 2 root 41 minus i times the square root of negative 10 plus 2 root 41. It doesn't mean the other method is easier. The other method will still come up with a horrible answer because that's just what the answer is. But you'll find that uh, in a lot of examples and a lot of questions I ask you to do, it's amazing how nice the numbers work to make life a little bit easier. Well, let's solve a quadratic equation. But as I said, the coefficients now don't have to be real numbers. So here's my quadratic. Z squared plus 2 plus i, z plus 2 minus 2i. This time, I am not expecting conjugates because the coefficients are not real. It's only when they're real you will get conjugates. Okay, sub it into the quadratic formula. Negative b, so that's negative 2 plus i, plus or minus the square root of b squared, 2 plus i squared, minus 4ac, uh, oh, thank goodness it was monic, uh, 4 times 2 minus 2i, expanding it all out and tidying it up, we get minus 2 plus i, plus or minus the square root of minus 5 plus 12. Oh, 5 and 12, that was nice, wasn't it? Because remember, there's a Pythagorean triad that goes 5, 12, 13, 5, 12, 13. So this will work nicely with our other method. So square root of minus 5 plus 12i, difference of two squares minus 5. Sum of two squares will be 13, that hypotenuse of the Pythagorean triad. Add them together, a is just 2, sum it in, b is equal to 3. Hang on, are they the same sign or a different sign? Same. It's all to do with the sign of the imaginary number. It's positive, so they're the same sign. So therefore... In this case, there's no worry about the plus or minus because it's there already in our formula. But plus or minus 2 plus 3i, um, we come up with our solutions. And when you look at these solutions, oh, how silly was I using the quadratic formula? Because I should have just said, what multiplies together to give 2 minus 2i? What others together to get 2 plus i? i and minus 2 minus 2i. There you go. Okay. <laughs> now we're having some fun. <laughs>